What is more emblematic of modern pop culture than TikTok? TikTok is the single most downloaded application of all time. It is there where men, women, and everything in betwixt pursue only the highest caliber of entertainment. Or, one would hope, TikTok is full of utterly mind-boggling horrid videos made to harness your attention while delivering you nothing of genuine value. This is the kind of filth today's youth consumes. I am reluctant to even call most of these pieces films, as the term film brings a layer of expectation, an expectation of quality, importance, and relevance. While occasionally a cinematic marvel may transpire from TikTok, the reality is most of these clips are made to keep you addicted to the software. Perhaps at the crusty age of 24, I'm out of touch. However, with TikTok, real-world complications have arisen. Attention spans of TikTok users have dramatically decreased thanks to the minuscule length of these reels. And don't even get me started on the Chinese. Uh, that came out wrong. Shall we travel back over a decade to 2012? Pop culture saw the sensational rise of Gangnam Style among other lesser things. The most vital piece to this video is a little mobile game called Subway Surfers. Subway Surfers is an endless runner mobile game co-developed by Kilu and Sabayo Games, private companies based in Denmark. It is available on Android, iOS, Harmony OS, Kindle, and Windows Phone's platforms and uses the Unity game engine. In the game, players take the role of young graffiti artists who upon being caught in the act of tagging a metro railway site, run through the railroad tracks to escape from the inspector and his dog. As they run, they grab gold coins, power-ups, and other items along the way while simultaneously dodging collisions with trains and other objects. They can also jump on top of the trains and surf with hoverboards to evade capture until the character crashes into an obstacle, gets caught by the inspector, or gets hit by a train, at which point the game ends. Special events such as the season hunt can result in in-game rewards and characters. And that paragraph was copy and pasted straight from Wikipedia. How devilish of I. Upon this very moment, you may be pondering to yourself, where is this video going? What do TikTok and Subway Surfers have in common? On a surface level, not much. However, this iceberg goes deeper than expected. Before we dive into this dynamic discussion, I must inform you of today's sponsor, Mecarina. For a moment, let's journey into our deep subconscious and be honest with ourselves. Giant mechs are hella badass. It's elementary. Mecarina is a wonderful PvP shooter. You can play with or against your fellow peers. While writing this script, I actually found myself getting lost in the sauce a few times. I highly recommend it. One of my favorite mechs is MD. Their special ability allows you to heal yourself and others. Truth be told, I can be pretty trash at the game, so I love to help out in any way I can. Also, he's literally my favorite color, so I think that's like half the reason why I like him. On the opposite end of the spectrum, I love Killshot as they're incredibly fast and have a super satisfying melee attack. There is a lot constantly happening in the game. There's a new clan feature, a new battle mode called Free For All, a new weapon called the Nade Launcher, and so much more. There's also some cool upcoming events that are going to drop limited edition skins. And of course, other new gear. I highly recommend jumping in sooner than later. It's completely free to play on Android, iOS, and PC right now. You can use my personal link in the description or scan the QR code right here to get a free starter pack worth $30. You get Rocket Mortar 6, an amateur crate, and a skin to help kickstart your game. And if you're of the haste, you can befriend me in the game and perhaps we'll play some matches together. Do not stall on this wonderful opportunity. Now, without further ado, let's mull over TikTok's exploitation of subway surfers. Is my girl cheating or am I being toxic? I asked to see my stepmom's honkers because I'm an idiot. I love my dog. I really do. But if he stands up and stares at me one more time, I'll send him to the shelter. EM wants me to lie about witnessing sexual harassment to protect her son. My entitled parents don't get why I hate them. Every time I think of eliminating myself, I don't, because I want to see the end of One Piece. I will not pretend that I have not been sucked into the rabbit hole of Reddit stories once or twice in my lifetime. These videos are a collection of the most wild things that people are not afraid to say online. Sure, you could read them yourself while scrolling through Reddit, but that's a lesser experience. Reading is... difficult. 
There is nothing quite as comforting as someone reading a story to you. Reflect with me for a moment to when you were a child and your mother would tuck you into bed and read you a bedtime story. The bliss and relaxation is like nothing else. Now, you are 30. You just got done beating the shit out of your sister. You are now on a train, attempting to flee from the law. You must do something to hold back the tears. Naturally, opening TikTok quickly comes to mind. Upon launching the application, you are met with the zaniest stories ever told by a soothing robotic AI voice, accompanied by remarkable Subway Surfers gameplay. From there you scroll and scroll and you scroll, only to be met with the same type of Reddit stories over and over and over. Eyes glued to Subway Surfers. Am I the asshole for punching my wife and putting both of my children in the adoption center? I, 37. Does the gameplay even change? Is this the same recording? It's impossible to tell. Some do consider this the eighth wonder of the world. In this very moment, you struggle to figure out what's keeping you watching. Is it the outlandish stories, or perhaps it's the captivating Subway Surfers gameplay? An hour goes by. No answers have been found. To find the answer, you tap on the search bar and type in the most highbrow thing you can think of, Family Guy. You are now browsing Family Guy TikTok. The smile on your face does not cease. Look at you go. Historically speaking, Family Guy does not typically get this reaction out of you. Suddenly, realization strikes. The main thing bringing you joy is the adolescent boy escaping the fuzz from jumping from subway to subway. Reality is often disappointing. Oh, for God's sake. See, a guy like that should just stay inside. This is not real. It's just a dream. Oh, for God's sake. Obviously, it is then you decide to turn yourself in. But why is this youngling avoiding conventional law enforcement so captivating? Yes, these TikToks may also present somebody whittling down a bar of soap. Or perhaps it's some shovelware mobile game nobody has ever heard of. Admittedly, an equal number of Minecraft Reddit stories have appeared, but Subway Surfers is the game that appears in the title of this video. Of course, it's not just Reddit stories and Family Guy clips that this portable gameplay accompanies. There are bountiful examples, but it is my assumption that you all recognize the situation at hand. But why is this a thing in the first place? For starters, Subway Surfers is the most downloaded mobile game of all time with over 3,000 million players, according to Wikipedia anyway. Like isn't 3,000 million 3 billion? Why is it listed as 3,000 million? Back to my primary thesis. What I am trying to articulate is that a lot of people have experienced train hoppers. Meanwhile, TikTok is the single most downloaded app of all time. A match made in heaven if you ask me. Akin to peanut butter and jelly. As previously stated, many people's attention spans are in fact shrinking. Reading Reddit is too boring for many. Listening to stories is more entertaining. Yet it still does not satisfy the content hunger that many humans lust for nowadays. We need the flavor enhancer that is underground transportation run and jump. The repetitive nature of this b-roll is of no dilemma. The cartoony and flashy visuals deliver the necessary eye candy. No context is needed for each and every video. Boy jumps? collects shiny objects, and rides a hoverboard. Thus, dopamine enters your mind as you gasp at how someone found out someone has been dating their father for almost four months. Wait a second, that's a Minecraft background. Okay, never mind, let me start over. The repetitive nature of this b-roll is of no dilemma. The cartoony and flashy visuals deliver the necessary eye candy. No context is needed for each and every video. Boy jumps, collects shiny objects, and rides a hoverboard. Thus dopamine enters your mind as you gasp at how someone explains how their dad may have killed someone when they were a kid. There we go much better. These types of videos create a symbiotic relationship for TikTok and Subway Surfers. Railroad Runners gets free promotion, and TikTok gets more filler content. Watching the rich get richer has never been more fun, but isn't there someone you forgot to ask? The idea for this game came about after the lead developer's son died after a skateboarding accident by the subway. This game is made in memory of his late son and meant to immortalize him for eternity. Is the developer 
happy with this? That this interpretation of his child is the unofficial face of my husband left me blaming me for our baby's death. Now I want a baby alone on his dime. Well, I'm sure he doesn't care because he's probably wealthy beyond belief. And also that story is fake. A few years ago, that story went viral based on a fake tweet, something this world has never seen before. With that being said, if you believed me there, you are foolish and should feel as such. Is this a bad time to ask you all to follow my Twitter? Even then, what about the main character, Jake? Would he approve of being the unofficial face for getting way too drunk and being intimate with my grandfather? Jake is the leader of the Subway Surfers. As I'm sure you may know, there is a whole roster of playable characters in the game. With Jake being the main protagonist, I think it's best to focus on the lad as most people seem to play as him. Jake is described as confident, charming, restless, and reckless. As we see in the animated series, he is exactly that. His in-universe relationship with TikTok is shockingly not explored. Times like these call for nothing else other than a game theory. Jake is clearly not one to stay inside or peruse his phone too often. The series focuses on him hanging out with friends, eating food, and participating in local Subway Surfers activities. However, he is no Luddite. Being a youngster himself, he seems to be technology literate and makes it a part of his daily life. He seems to mostly use his cellular device as a tool to keep in touch with his friends and document his work. So it's unclear whether or not he'd even have TikTok on his phone. It's even harder to tell whether or not he'd be following my account. <clears throat> but let's say he was in our world. How would he feel about this TikTok fame? I can see this going in a couple directions. On one hand, he is often proud of his work. He takes photographs of his art and seems to brag about running away from the officers. Pride is his greatest sin. Perhaps the fame from these videos would go to his head and he would change for the worst. The fame would suddenly hit him all at once. Jake would be enamored with the popularity. In complete juxtaposition, his single mother would suffer. Jake already takes issue with her quite often. Not only does he get in trouble with the law, but often disobeys his mother's orders. The fame most likely inflates Jake's ego, undoubtedly creating even more domestic complications. It is only a matter of time before he goes off the rails. The direction of his downfall from this point on remains a bit unclear. TikTok is not a platform one easily makes money on. Not to mention the videos other people upload would not necessarily directly contribute to his follower growth on any of his social media platforms. His hubris may be the only thing expanding. Does he go against his mother to the point he gets kicked out and forced on the streets? Does he then start surfing couches as opposed to subways? Perhaps he copes with paraphernalia and then continues to spiral even further and further. Eventually he may grow lethargic and would not be able to outrun the cop and his canine companion, leading him right to the slammer. But may I propose another possible path he takes? Jake is someone who is not afraid to go against the norm. There's a good chance he would oppose TikTok. It's hard to imagine he'll ever fall for the addictive ways of the application. If he does give it a try, it's more likely the first thing he would notice is how manipulative the algorithm can be. Or perhaps he's someone to protest against other countries collecting his data via an app. I can foresee a timeline where he learns of his TikTok fame and becomes disgusted. He becomes an advocate for banning TikTok in the state. His level of success in this venture would only be speculation. But what relevance is any of this? Should we be worried about how this fictional character may feel? This is something I've often wondered. Epic rap battles of history often poses this question. Would Darth Vader be okay with being compared to Adolf Hitler? The Wright brothers to the Mario brothers? Greg Heffrey to Anne Frank? Well, in some cases it can be hard to tell. But what I do know is Artists vs Turtles is the best rap battle. For starters, the 4v4 format is unique and they did not skimp on the talent. The elegant yet aggressive nature of the artist's bars set the tone in a way that not only represents their real life counterparts, but also presents a genuine challenge for the turtles to overcome. Chills are sent down the spines of all who listen to the turtles' introduction. Their buildup is unlike anything I have ever bared witness. Their cocky yet devastating lyrics pose the perfect counter to the artists. The dynamic from here on out can only be compared to the likes of perfect symmetry, peanut butter, and jelly. So, what is the big takeaway of the video? Mecarina is a really fun video game. 
Use the link in my description or scan the QR code to play now. In my past couple of videos, I've been talking about how I've been holding Marshmallow Heater captive in a hamster ball. In last video, I took Marshmallow outside and slammed her against the snow. I slammed a little too hard and kind of broke the hamster ball. And now the top doesn't even stay on anymore. So I decided to do the right thing. I am going to duct tape the hamster ball together to make sure Marshmallow does not get out until I reach 150,000 subscribers. There we go. Now escape is futile. Marshmallow's life is in your hands. All you have to do is subscribe.